everybody, this is Liz from Trilise and I welcome you to this podcast where I talk mostly about my yarns. I'm the dyer behind Trilise Yarns and my knits and um, usually festivals when they're around nowadays. And yeah, my fibery uh, adventures and not only. So how have you been? I've been good. I've been not so good and I finished two projects so I'm happy I have things to show you uh, I have things to tell you and so exciting so anyways this uh, last month I've been a bit away and more quiet than usual because I had a knee surgery and uh, it had been really rough since then to walk to do pretty much anything but uh, yeah, especially in the beginning, it was really awful because uh, except that I couldn't walk, I was really, really dizzy and had uh, really uh, big issues with nausea because of the anesthetics and my blood pressure was really, really low and um, it was challenging, I would say. I had this amazing idea because I wouldn't walk but i would finish all my small projects you know socks binnies and the sweater that i had but yeah and read also but guys this first 10 days i didn't do anything almost anything it was awful i was trying to read i would see double i was trying to go uh you know and get some air i was feeling nauseated I tried to knit I couldn't so it was really frustrating and I think I was just sleeping because I couldn't do anything else yeah and you might think that you know okay you slept so you you know you rested and all but I don't know it's weird but it wasn't restful sleep I don't know how to explain it it was more passing out and waking up <laughs> it was really weird but anyways after that after the first 10 days that I had my surgery then I was fortunate to be able to travel to Belgium and I was actually at home with by night Nathalie and her husband Jean-Luc and actually she had uh, also surgery beginning of October so she w had more time to heal than I did but we were both you know she couldn't lift a lot her arms I couldn't really walk but we were able to manage to do things and we we're so happy that we did open days again at her place and this time uh, Cécile from La Féfile was there she came from Paris and also Matt came, uh, he's a great designer, Mathieu Arnaud, and he's, he has a few designs now, but he's still in the beginning of his endeavors. And I really, really love two of his uh, shawls, and I'm actually thinking of doing uh, both of them at some point. Uh, the one is a bit more complicated, and the other one is a bit more simple. So I don't remember now the names, but I will take pictures and the names. So this one is the more complicated and I wasn't sure if I liked it or not. Then I put it on me and I was like, oh my God, I need this. I need it. Like it really is very flattering how it covers you. And I really like that it sits a bit asymmetrical on you. Then the other one, more simple one here, uh, I think it's great because it's just the two skin shawl. The shape is really amazing. Like I find it very um, different than other shapes of shawls. And I find it a perfect, um, a perfect project, you know, a unisex project for, you know, guys that aren't into color, but you can sneak some color in. Uh, and I'm actually thinking of doing that with just, um, you know, stash busting uh, and rest and just you know go ahead or just one skein of a, a, a solid or you know a basic color and then the others just leftovers and go crazy with it i i really like this idea yeah 
I know I have great ideas. I'm so full of myself some days. Yeah, but so yeah, you can see this attitude after being 10 days, like not able to walk and communicate and just be. I was there with all those amazing people that I adore and love. Oh my God, it was really, really good. Um, it was funny because until um, I was, you know, up and helping with people and all that. But on Sunday morning, I woke up and I was like, you know what, guys, today I feel great. And it wasn't that the other days I wasn't feeling great, but I was getting tired very easily with my leg and I would get frustrated with myself. And so uh, Sunday morning, I don't know, I was like, yes, I, Liz is back, you know? So it was great to see them. Then the first, uh, you know, uh, sad moment was when Matt and Cecile had to leave, but I had a few more days uh, uh, at Nathalie's with Jean-Luc and it was really great. Uh, did lots of admin work there and uh, organized some things that I needed to with orders for trailies and getting some stock before, you know, the, my stock is closed for, um, for the holidays and all that getting prepared, getting prepared the pre-orders that are now up, getting prepared what I want as new colorways and ideas and maybe, you know, uh, names of colorways. And I'm very excited because actually yesterday and this morning, uh, I dyed new colorways. So they have to be photographed. They well, they have to dry first and to be photographed. And at some point, I think they'll be up uh with along with the pre-orders uh i will try to do all that tomorrow or after tomorrow even if it's the weekend because i'm so excited and i can't wait to share them with you but uh, taking pictures and you know having the right light in winter time isn't always easy so bear with me and first they need to try yeah uh so Without further ado, I think I should just um, show you what I've been working on or what I finished. Maybe what I finished first because I'm excited, yes. So I finished my Saiga sweater by Folie Ordinaire that I started after the Nitty Lyon and it is made with my Innocence, Innocence, Innocence colorway. And it's a very simple um, sweater. It just has this motif in the raglan that goes all down. And it's just amazing. I've worn it since I finished it, like so, so much, so much. I wanted to have long sleeves. So I wanted to go, um, you know, until the end of my yarn and just for the ribbing, I added some um, confessions that I had. And um, also, this is a great example of how you can make some bases. Uh, you know that my Hera, uh, my new Hera base is um, 325 meters instead of 366, that's fingering weight. So it's like a very light sport. And my confessions was some leftovers um, in Zeus, which is my single, so 366 meters and single. Uh, so when you see them, you can see that the difference as yarns, you know, that one is a bit more plumpy than the other, but when they're knitted, like you can't feel it. It's just amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. I really love it. And I love how flashy and, you know, happy it is. I think it's just so me. And yeah, I love it. The only difference that I did with the pattern, the pattern is very snug on the sleeves, but I don't like snug sleeves. So I did, as she was mentioning, the first three decreases, and then you have to decrease all along until the end almost of your sleeve, but I didn't do that. I decreased uh, three times here, and then I knitted just straight up until my elbow, and after my elbow, I just did a few more decreases so it gets a bit more tight. If you can see, you can see here that it goes a bit more tight by in the ends. <clears throat> 
So that's it. So, Saiga Sweater by Folie Ordinaire. Thank you, Milan, for this wonderful, beautiful pattern. Um, this is my Innocence colorway in Hera, but uh, yeah, because I want it to be a bit more, more comfy. I like comfy things. Then the second object is uh, when I traveled to Belgium, I had several little projects with me. Uh, so, uh, and also the end of the sleeves of the sweater, but um, sorry, I'm getting warmer here. Um, so I had started a hat that I really wanted to make with some leftovers and, uh, and some yarns from my stash. But then Kathleen, a very good friend of mine, um, uh, we started our friendship, you know, as, as uh, you know, um, as client and dyer, but we got to meet into a festival and we kind of had some adventures together. And every time that I go, she lives in the Netherlands, she drives and comes and sees me and she always brings me something. So. The thing that she brought me this time is a type of yarn that looks like Lopi yarn, but isn't Lopi. I don't remember uh, the name. I will find it and put all the details over here. And it's a mesh-like uh, yarn, like the Lopi. So it can break very easily, as you can see. So this is very warm once knitted, very... Um, uh, very sturdy when it's knitted because actually it's gonna make the the um, the wool the fibers are going to stick together and do a fabric um so you might see air here but it's just the best thing that you can have so she brought some in this beautiful beautiful i don't know orangey brick because she knows that i like orange and I had some leftovers. No, I didn't. Those weren't leftovers. Sorry. And I had some leftovers from this mustard from my egg. And I had it for as a contrasting color for the other hat that I wanted to do. So then I thought that I wanted to try to knit this because it was like, oh my God, this is new stuff. I need to try it. And I decided to make the Taka hat that I had already made with the Mayak yarn, which is a Kintlin Hunter's um, design. And I love this little, uh, you know, this little um, side. So the Taka hat with this, and then with this. So this would resemble this, but I, as you can see, there's, something else that's in the mix and what is in the mix is shadow and bones in my Poseidon base mohair and silk so that gives you that and oh my god I love it I didn't know because this uh, didn't came with you know size of needles and how to knit with it I started with four and a half but the gauge was like really loose so I did four and so it's a bit bigger than the other, uh, but it feels strangely more snuck into my, into my head. I don't know how to say it. And uh, even though, because here I used bigger needles, uh, we were outside and I could feel the air, but while I was walking and being out, it just, was getting warmer and warmer and warmer and I think that was amazing uh, but I don't know this uh, hat I really like it yeah actually it isn't bigger than the other but it feels you know a bit larger though but uh, yeah I, I feel it more snug around my head Definitely there's a gauge difference with when I hold the mohair with the Mayak yarn, with the mustard, because this one is more, um, is applied yarn, you know, 
And so as applied yarn, it isn't so flexible, I would say. So it won't compress as much as that one because it's a mesh. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but guys, I love it. It's one of my favorite things I've done. I'm so happy that I have leftovers and I'm thinking of doing other hats like with those two colors combination, you know, like not those two color combination, but what I like at this hat is that it has two colors and you can play. And I really like it as a, as a shape. And I'm not, and it's always like the same little, uh, you know, um, um, cable and it's easy. I don't know. So I'm thinking now maybe to do another one with a darker color as this one. And then the orange on top, I don't know. And the mohair, what it brings to the colors, what it's making. Oh, look it, I like it, I like it, I like it. I'm going crazy over here, yeah. I know, but it's okay. Crazy is good, right? <laughs> Being normal is overrated. So the Takabeni uh, with those, this, gives you this, this gives you this. Diddy, diddy. Anyways, so those are the two finished projects that I managed to finish um, this month. And I'm really happy because I did finish something, you guys. Actually, I had finished something that has to do with the mystery box. And thankfully, I have taken pictures of it because I've managed to lose it. And now I am, should I knit another one? Do I have the time? I do have the time, but do I have the strength? <laughs> I do have the strength, but do I really want? No, but should I? Maybe I should, because I actually I wanted to gift it to someone and I just took it from home to take pictures and now I can't find it. And I don't know, maybe it's under a pile of yarn at home. Maybe it's under a pile of yarn here in the studio. I don't know. It's been crazy and um, me being in a nauseating uh, state for so long. And then with the trip, I actually don't know what I've done with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. But then I want to finish some of my small projects that I want to, because I really want to have them. Is it selfish? Maybe it is. And you know what? I think it's okay to be a bit selfish. Like I haven't been for a long time and I want those small projects to be done. Especially, especially, no, both of them are equally important, but maybe the one more because I never do that and I've never done this kind of project because I actually, I'm lazy. I'm a lazy knitter and that's why I don't like to knit socks, even though I love to have socks, you know that. So the other project was to be socks and it's not with my yarn. It, will, it is with the self-striping yarn, my first self-striping yarn. Oh my God, it feels so dirty. Uh, from um, Le, uh, Le Bruit des Aiguilles, the, the noise of the needles, I guess, yes. Um, and it is this beautiful colorway that I don't remember the name, but it's okay. So I was like, yes, I'm gonna have serious socks. Uh, but then it was so cold and I was trying to find my mitts and I've never done mitts. If you know me, you know that I've never done mitts. Uh, I love the mitts that, are, you know, the Latvian style or the um, uh, Nordic style, you know, beautiful color rig and all that. But I would never do them, not because I don't like them, but... First of all, you have to do two of them. And second of all, they're close. I am useless without the end of my fingers. So if I would make mitts, they should be, you know, open. The first pair of mitts that I have are mitts that I bought at a festival. Yes, I'm this kind of person. And then the second ones were gifted 
last year or two years ago i don't remember it was a christmas gift it was amazing and uh, rachel from rachel says Yepa on instagram she gifted me those beautiful colorful mitts that she made after her leftovers from my yarn like come on amazing and now I was knitting the socks and I was going around and around and around and because they're self-striping socks, I don't know why, I didn't even do the toe that I usually go toe up and I just started, you know, I just cast on 60 stitches and I was like, okay, let's just go. Then I remembered that it's a 50 gram skein and I was like, okay, when it's around, you know, uh, like 28 gram, grams minus, I would uh, just start ribbing and have the end of my sock and then I'll do the, how do you say, the toes and an afterthought heel afterwards. But whoever knows me knows, yes, you know, that I like my socks to be quite high. So if I had to put, let's say this part is the toe, then it's about my hand. I will have just that up for a sock. No, that's too short, like, come on. Then I could just add up some ribbing in another color, but no, I don't want to. And it was cold those days and I couldn't find my mitts because after, after um, travels, I'm just like, whatever. So one day I just put it on my arm and I'm like, oh, this is so warm. This is so nice, you guys, so nice. And then I was thinking, huh, they're not so long. Even if I'm really cold, I can have them over my actual socks, like leg like warmers, you know, really tight around my foot got so excited like literally so excited so that's what's happening i casted on the second pair with the little rest the half of the yarn and i'm doing another mid like that so there's no pattern i'm not using a pattern i just casted on 60 stitches i didn't do a ribbing nothing because actually even if i put it the other side I actually kind of like this roll edge, makes it a bit more rock or whatever in my mind. But yeah, so I just did the same. I cast it on 60 stitches and I'm going up and then about two grams of ribbing, one on one. You can see here that I'm, I suck at ribbing with those needles the first time that i'm using those i really like them for going around and around but i have to say for the ribbing maybe i will switch for magic loop if i'm not too bored i would be probably too bored to do that and i really don't care that here i have some stitches that are longer because come on it's handmade it has to be imperfect like how am i gonna cast away the evil eye right so that's what's going on with this. And so I'm really, I, I want to, to start again. The other thing that I can't show you to gift on the other hand, my, my hands are so cold, you guys, it's so cold. Oh, and a friend of mine gave me some small gel pads that you, I don't know, you don't really break something inside, but you pop it and it starts to get warm and oh my god i tried one and i put it inside here it's like the best thing ever like and now i can be outside and you know like long boards with the pads in my hands like i'm never gonna be cold yet anyways i'm dreaming of warmer hands so that's what my priority is like first priority. The second priority to finish is again a small, a small project that I started this summer. Uh, this summer? Yes, this summer when I was again at Natalie. And I've already shown it, I think. It is the Simone handband by Atelier Emily. And it's a handband, okay? And she uses a fingering and a mohair. I thought, 
because it's double the mohair would be like too much and actually you can wear it either like that or either like that and this part is to make a knot so um over here is a bit like the middle part of this i have to do all that and then it's done and then this little going around i did a mistake that the cable pattern that you see in front i did it also in the back uh where she just uses it in the in the front side i used my colorway uh shadow and bones when i first dyed it and uh, i think it's my hair base i i'm most probably sure that it is and i actually really really love the pulling because it's going crazy like the cables are making crazy of the colors but it also makes gives it an impression of stripes like abstract stripes and i love it and here over here it went a bit crazier i don't know what happened i think like my skin had more yellow sections so it got a bit more pushed into the yellow side but i actually really like them like they're so fun like come on who won't love these colors on their head like really so this is also a priority because i want also to wear a bit more handbands in winter than just hats but because i have hats and because my head isn't freezing like my hands are that's why it's like a second priority for the moment while the mid is first priority so i hope those two to be finished uh, before christmas i'm not so sure but hopefully they will. And on Christmas day, I'm starting the newspaper pullover knit along. Uh, you can find details on, um, on Ravelry in my group Trillies. Uh, I haven't thought of gifts or whatever, but I'm sure that depending, you know, if we're a large group, I'm gonna give away some skeins. If not, maybe just one winner, but um, I think it's gonna be fun. It will be casted on Christmas Day and then until the 15th of February, I think I've said to finish it. I haven't yet decided which are going to be my colorways. I was thinking to go for more classic combo, something more simple. Simple. What I mean classic combo, I mean like a Star Wars, which is a dark blue with... Um, with i don't know le louvre which is mustardy you know something not so crazy but yesterday i did new colors and i like them so maybe i'll take some of those i really have no idea and uh we'll see i will let you know definitely of course uh, i can wait to see you there and um you know just spread the word uh if anyone wants to do a knit along of a plover you know just go ahead and share those the pre-orders are up they're going to be up until the 2nd of january and then afterwards i will be dyeing them so i think depending when the stocks arrives and all that that they will be shipped mid-january to your places and yeah so that's it i'm gonna do um hopefully very soon uh maybe even later on today uh, a small video with the new colorways for you to get to know them actually i need to get to know them because i had the inspiration i had the names but now i have to get used for them to being in my world if it makes sense and um yeah i can't wait really i, I can't so have a great day um be careful be creative, have wonderful vacations if I don't see you before, um, be blessed, have good health and take care of yourselves and your loved ones. All the best wishes to everyone and don't forget, color is power. Fiber is our weapon.